Most Protestant, Baptist, and many independent groups believe in the invisible coming of Jesus Christ to save the so-called believers from the Great Tribulation. It's either seven years or three and a half years. In our exposition today about the rapture, we will try to answer some questions about this subject. Is there really a rapture? The word rapture is a term in Christian eschatology that refers to being caught up as written in the following. By the way, the word rapture came from the Latin word rapire, which means to caught up. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13, But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. In verse 14, For if you believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Question. We have been teaching this doctrine when you, a bishop of a popular sect, and I, a preacher, inspire our plot regarding this promise of Jesus Christ. Will you please brief our listeners regarding this doctrine of being caught up? Rapture is a term in Christian eschatology which refers to being caught up, discussed in 1 Thessalonians 4.17, when the dead in Christ and we who are alive and remain will be caught up in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. There are two general beliefs of, on this doctrine. First, pre-tribulation doctrine, where people will be left behind on earth after another group literally leaves to meet the Lord in the air. Second, post-tribulation period is an older doctrine which is synonym with the final resurrection of the chosen. After recognizing Jesus Christ, as Simon Peter did in Matthew 16, verse 16 and 17, this made us free from his rebuke. For now, God no longer is a mystery. In John chapter 8 verse 19, Jesus answered, You neither know me nor my Father. If you had known me, you should have known my Father also. This miracle, if I may call it, made me fully trust God for his exposition of his words. I realize God is speaking in parables and only he can expound on his intended message. Now, my question, can you support your belief that human understanding based on the letter of the word is not allowed on matters pertaining to God and his words? Perhaps everybody noticed this, but it is only ignored using human understanding. People find the Holy Bible to be full of contradictions and boring to read. They only close their eyes, pretending to know what they are reading, just so they can praise and worship God. And yet they claim God is a mystery incapable of clear identification. Have many people realized this great spiritual blunder when they meet God at the white throne judgment? Question. What will God tell the people you are referring to? This is what I read, and I hope our listeners contemplate on this very carefully. In Luke chapter 13, beginning in verse 26 down to verse 28, I will read, Then shall ye begin to say, We have eaten and drunk in thy presence, and thou hast taught in our streets. But he shall say, I will tell you, I know you not. 
whence you are, depart from me, and ye workers of iniquity. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth, when ye shall see Abraham, and all the prophets, in the kingdom of God, and you yourselves trust out. And to the religious leaders, who have performed spectacular healing, they call miracles, using the name Jesus Christ. In Matthew chapter 7, beginning in verse 22, Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works. And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. What does God mean by iniquity? When these people are religiously pious or virtuous. Iniquity or wickedness that God sees in the people in the following. First, being a jealous God and the people trust men in spiritual matters. The word iniquity precisely refers to it. This began when the people asked for a king or a leader. 1 Samuel chapter 8, verse 6 up to verse 7, I will read. They said, Give us a king to judge us. And Samuel prayed unto the Lord. And the Lord said unto Samuel, Hearken unto the voice of the people in all that they say unto thee. For they have not rejected thee, but they have rejected me, that I should not reign over them. And so the curse in Jeremiah 17 verse 5. Thus saith the Lord, Curse be the man that trusted in man, and maketh flesh his arm. Second, not genuine or insincere trust in God, which to him is hypocrisy. Proverbs 3, 5. I will read, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. Third, human wisdom and emotionalism that God condemns. Jeremiah 17, verse 9. I will read, The heart is deceitful above all things, and desperately wicked. Who can know it? The evil of iniquity, therefore, is overlooked by the very religious leaders. If ever they notice it, because of pride, they just ignore it for self-exaltation, which has become their precious possession. Question. Considering the foregoing, what can you say now to these two doctrines regarding rapture? Very clear. The second doctrines of rapture, the word of God is taken to the letter, and therefore the advocates of this belief are automatically disqualified to be ministers of the New Testament. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 6. I quote, Who also hath made us able ministers of the New Testament, not of the letter, but of the Spirit. For the letter killeth, but the Spirit giveth life. In taking the letter of the word, very clearly this is in contravention of what God revealed to Paul, who recognized Jesus Christ personally. It is not what is seen, but of the things that are not seen. According to 2 Corinthians 4.18, I will read, While we look not at the things which seen, but at the things which are not seen, for the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. It would be very interesting if we now discuss this belief about rapture. In both doctrines about rapture, the Holy Bible is taken literally. I will read again, 1 Thessalonians 4.13 But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that you sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. End of quote. Here, God warns us not to be ignorant concerning those who are asleep. Literally asleep is the state sleeping deeply or soundly. Spiritually, asleep may differ to the following symbolism. First, asleep is actually awake but can speak. As in Song of Solomon's chapter 7 verse 9, I will read, And the roof of thy mouth like the best for my beloved, causing the lips of those that are asleep to speak. Second, for Stephen, Asleep means physical death. In Acts 7.60, I will read, And he kneeled down and cried with a loud voice, Lord, lay not this sin to their charge. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. And the warning of Peter regarding the coming of our Lord in 2 Peter 3.4, Where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, 
All things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. Third, in the following, the person is alive but considered dead because he cannot understand spiritual things. Proverbs 21 verse 16 The man that wandereth out of the way of understanding shall remain in the congregation of the dead. How about Lazarus, who was dead for four days? Jesus raised him to life, and then he began to walk with our Lord. What does asleep or sleep mean in this great miracle? The story of Lazarus will prove rapture is just a fruit of human wisdom. You must be referring to the following when Jesus told his apostles, John 11 verse 11, This thing said Jesus of friend Lazarus sleepeth, but I go that I may awake him out of sleep. In verse 14, Then said Jesus unto them plainly, Lazarus is dead. Who would not think that Lazarus was not dead physically, as related in the following, John 11 verse 17. Then when Jesus came, he found that he had lain in the grave four days already. Verse 19, And many of the Jews came to Martha and Mary to comfort them concerning their brother. Verse 21, Then said Martha unto Jesus, Lord, if thou hast been here, my brother hath not died. Further supporting human perception that Lazarus is dead physically, when Jesus told Martha, in John chapter 11, from verse 23 up to verse 27, Jesus said unto her, thy, bro thy brother shall rise again. Martha said unto him, I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet, shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die, believeth thou this. She said unto him, Yea, Lord, I believe that thou art the Christ, the Son of God, which should come into the world. I will continue to complete the story. John eleven thirty one to verse 39. I will read. Then Jews then which were with her in the house and comforted her, when they saw Mary, that she rose up hastily and went out, followed her, saying, She goeth unto the grave to weep there. Then when Mary was come where Jesus was and saw him, she fell down at his feet, saying unto him, Lord, if thou hast been here, my brother hath not died, and said, Where have you laid him? They said unto him, Lord, come and see. Jesus wept. Then said the Jews, Behold, how he loved him. And some of them said, Could not this man ha which opened the eyes of the blind have caused that even this man should not have died? Jesus therefore again groaning in himself cometh to the grave. It was a cave, and a stone lay upon it. Jesus said, Take ye away the stone, Martha. The sister of him that was dead saith unto him, Lord, by this time he stinketh, for he hath been dead for four days. This is a classic example that many Bible believers are convinced Jesus Christ indeed raised Lazarus from physical death. Dear listeners, is it possible that the story of Lazarus is just a parable? But God will reveal the great lesson of his death and resurrection. Why did you raise the different symbolisms for death? Is there a doubt for the authenticity of this miracle that it happened literally, basically? Let us remember God speaks in parable and what we read in the Holy Bible only represents the letter of the word. Can we just disregard this truth regarding qualification of the New Testament ministers? In 2 Corinthians 3, 6, we, can, we read, Who also hath made us able ministers of the New Testament, not of the letter, but of the Spirit. For the letter killeth, but the Spirit giveth life. Further, can we also deny that God is able 
uh, is after the soul rather than of the body? Let us remember the body will turn to dust, while the soul is what would gain the resurrected body of Jesus Christ in eternity. Hence, it is not what is seen, but the unseen. 2 Corinthians 4.18 While we look not at the things which seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Question. Since you brought this point, how does God guide us to the real message of Lazarus being raised from the dead? One clue we read in the corruptible body of man, only the dead body of Jesus Christ did not suffer corruption. As it is written, since the Old Testament time, this was already prophesied. Psalm 16 verse 10, I will read, For thou will not leave my soul in hell, neither wilt thou suffer thine holy one to see corruption. And so the body of Christ resurrected on the third day without suffering corruption because he is sinless or unblemished. Mark 10, 34 And they shall mock him, and shall scourge him, and shall spit upon him, and shall kill him. And the third day he shall rise again. The apostles testified on this in Acts 13, 37. I will read, But he whom God raised again saw no corruption. Are you now comparing Lazarus with Jesus Christ who did not suffer corruption of the body? My friend, there is no comparison. It is because only Jesus Christ whose body did not suffer corruption because he is sinless. What conclusion then God wants us to believe? Lazarus actually was not dead physically. Jesus Christ gave the clue to his apostles. This is the letter of the word. John 11, 14. I will read. Then said Jesus unto them plainly, Lazarus is dead. However, Jesus continued which was a deep meaning that many people missed. In John 11, verse 11. I will read. This thing said Jesus, our friend Lazarus sleepeth, but I go that I may awake him out of sleep. Divine revelation will prove that Lazarus is not dead physically. What more it is written in Hebrews 9.27 as it is appointed unto men once to die, after this the judgment. If Lazarus was not physically dead, then what is the proper symbolism for the word sleepeth, as Jesus told about the death of Lazarus? It falls under the following where a person is alive, but he is out of the way of understanding. Proverbs 21 verse 16 The man that wandereth out of the way of understanding shall remain in the congregation of the dead. If so, then Lazarus was just a natural man. In 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 14, But the natural man received not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. In other words, Jesus Christ, knowing Lazarus, is poor in spirit, he raised him up spiritually to become a spiritual man. And so, in contrast to a natural man, Lazarus was truly born again. In 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 15, But he that is spiritual judgeth all things, yet he himself is judge of no man. For who hath known the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. Then, what is the intended meaning of rupture? If this will not happen literally, physically, but spiritually. God's divine revelation of Lazarus being raised to life, that is not literal physical, will nullify and invalidate the popular belief about rupture. Very clear, the body of the chosen will suffer corruption, unlike the body of Jesus Christ that is unblemished or sinless. The body of the chosen does not deserve to be with God in eternity. Rather, the soul will be endowed 
a body like the glorified body of Jesus Christ after His resurrection. As we read in 1 John 3 verse 2, I will read, Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when He shall appear, we shall be like Him, for we shall see Him as He is. How about Elijah, who went up by a whirlwind into heaven in 2 Kings chapter 2, verse 11? Again, this is not literal, physical, but spiritual. Otherwise, it will contradict many truths about Jesus Christ not having suffered corruption of his body. Let us now take the circumstances leading to rapture, or in the real sense, to be born again. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13, But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. These are people asleep like Lazarus, but physically alive. They are natural men who cannot understand the spiritual language of God. However, God knows they are poor in spirit or willing to humble themselves before Him. Humbling oneself before God means willing to condemn human wisdom on things about God and His words. Question. What does the following mean? In 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 14, For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. As Jesus in his role as Father fulfilled his testament of salvation with his death on the cross and rose again, then those asleep like Lazarus will God bring with him. How about 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 5? For this we may say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. Those who are already born again or became spiritual men are waiting for those who are still asleep. These are natural men who are willing to humble themselves before God. How about in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16? For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Lord descend from heaven simply refers to the truth that can be heard. With a shout to the natural man, the truth is like a shout or a hole that many would not want to hear. How about the voice of the archangel with the trump of God? Perhaps many have not realized that angels has several references. Number one, Gideon saw and spoke to an angel in Judges 6.21-23. to But it turned out to be God himself. Second, on the other hand, John the Apostles as he was in the island of Patmos, saw and talked to an angel. He tried to worship him, but it turned out to be a fellow servant of God. Revelation 22 verse 8, I read, And I, John, saw these things and fell down to worship before the feet of the angel, which showed me these things. Verse 9, Then said he unto me, See thou do it not, for I am thy fellow servant and of thy brethren the prophets, and of them which keep the saying of this book, Worship God. <clears throat> then the voice of the archangel with the trump of God actually is just a chosen of God who speaks about the truth that for people it is too loud like hearing a trumpet. Now I experience this myself. People leave me when I talk about the truth on the word of God. All of us who talk about the truth, many people avoid us as if they are hearing the voice of an archangel too loud like the sound of a trumpet. How about 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 17? Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord 
in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. We who are alive, that means having spiritual life, are just waiting for those who will eventually have spiritual life like us. What does it mean to be caught up in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air? Clouds are up in the air, indicating the chosen are in a position above those the natural men. And besides, God has this to say regarding clouds that contain water vapor. Deuteronomy 32 verse 2, I read, My doctrine shall drop as the rain, my speech shall distill as the dew. If many people rejoice on hearing rapture in the fellowships, how much more we who have experienced the joy of being with God through His wonderful words. And so, Psalms 56 verse 10 to 13 In God will I praise His word. In the Lord will I praise His word. In God have I put my trust. I will not be afraid what man can do unto me. Thy bows are upon me, O God. I will render praises unto thee, for thou hast delivered my soul from death. Will not thou deliver my feet from falling, that I may walk before God in the light of the living? Again, with my whole heart, I would like to thank you all for your continuous search for the truth in the word of God and your trust with this ministry. May the Father bless us all.